Today we celebrate the incredible impact that Grace United Methodist Church has had on the lives of thousands of people. 150 years ago, the fervor of the Third Great Awakening in the 1850s through the 1900s, characterized by the end of the Civil War in 1865, active missionary work, and the social gospel approach to faith, gave rise to a mission Sunday school born out of First Methodist Church in downtown Atlanta, pictured here. The east side of Atlanta proved to be fertile ground for embracing the Methodist expression of Christianity. Named the St. John Mission and located on Boulevard and Irwin, its trustees were members of other churches who came together to manage finances. Guided first by W.O. Dunlap and then by W.A. Dodge, it outgrew its space after 12 years. By 1884, this new building housed the congregation at the corner of Boulevard between Houston and Kane Streets and was known as the Boulevard Church. The new church was chartered as Grace Methodist Episcopal Church South, meaning it compromised on John Wesley's stand against slavery. This designation stood until 1939 when the North and South designations were ended. Unfortunately, as we know, even then, the racial distinctions between people still carried on. Reverend M. H. Dillard was appointed pastor, and in its first year, membership increased by 170%. The congregation continued to grow, and in 1906, built this new building known as the Highland location at the northeast corner of Highland and Boulevard. Its opening ceremonies in June spanned over a week. At that point, Grace paid it forward and started a new Sunday school on North Avenue, which then grew into the North Druid Hills Church, pictured here. Then tragedy struck. In May 1917, a fire burned through the Fourth Ward along Boulevard from Decatur Street to a couple of blocks north of Ponce. The church was completely destroyed by the fire, along with the homes of 90% of the congregation. This was all that remained of the cherished church after the Great Fire. Though the country was in the midst of a world war, the congregation quickly constructed an all-purpose building to house meetings and classes while this sanctuary was being built. By 1922, Grace had the largest Sunday school program in all of Georgia across denominations. Construction of the new Ponce de Leon Sanctuary was completed in 1923. In 1954, the church was expanded again, with changes in light fixtures, new woodwork, and more. The three arched openings in the back of the choir loft contained red velvet drapes. From the beginning through the 1960s, the congregation of Grace Church continued to grow. This photo from January 1960 shows 400 people joining the church on a single Sunday. The civil rights movement of the 1960s brought great changes to Atlanta. Fear caused white flight and major shifts in demographics in the city. Grace was part of a response by pastors in support of racial equality, but Sunday still remained the most segregated day of the week and racism continued to be a powerful force in the community and in the church. Still, Grace continued to grow. In 1969, the deteriorating multipurpose building was raised and replaced by a modern structure. In 1971, we celebrated 100 years with many commemorative events. A final sanctuary renovation occurred in 2006 with changes to the choir loft and windows, and additional pipes and ranks were added to the organ. Over time, beautiful stained glass windows were added to the sanctuary. This is Grace Church today, but of course, as we all know, the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is a people. Throughout Grace's history, many beloved saints of the church have made a contribution. Many served for decades, including Mary Hogan, our church secretary through the 1940s and 50s, and Sue Goddard, Grace's beloved organist starting in 1956. Many inspirational and gifted pastors served through the years, including Reverend Charles Allen, an internationally renowned preacher who was honored with the naming of Charles Allen Drive, and Reverend Sam Coker, who authored a hymn about this church and is shown riding into town as John Wesley. In its earliest days, Grace had some of the largest and most active Sunday schools in the nation. Every person had an opportunity to belong, be in fellowship, study the Bible, and participate beyond worship. This is the James L. Key class in the 1920s. 
By the 1930s, it had so many people it required a very long photo that won't even fit on this screen. From small groups to large, with different interests and activities, people felt they belonged at Grace. Groups abounded for all ages, from older to younger, for women and for men. From the beginning, music has filled the church. Congregants have used their voices and instruments to inspire and give praise to God. Youth and children's choirs taught young people to read music and sing together in praise. And bell choirs provided chimes of grace. Musical talents were contributed in many different configurations, styles, and instruments. Special musical events with orchestras and guest choruses have continued to be the delight of the community. Grace even had a nationally televised Christmas concert with the Bill Baker Festival Singers. High holidays of the season were celebrated with color, creativity, and joy. Grace has even experimented with innovative Sunday morning experiences such as the Broadway Brunch to invite new participation. Over the years, as Grace's membership began to spread to the suburbs and Midtown experienced a decline in business and housing, the membership of Grace also declined and around 2014, the congregation faced the possibility of closing Grace Church. Around that time, the General Board of Global Ministries for the United Methodist Denomination began to explore relocating its headquarters from New York City. Atlanta and the Grace Complex were a perfect match. Major renovations transformed the education wing of the building into offices and meeting rooms. Now the beautiful Grace Building continues a tradition of service and mission by hosting many gatherings from around the world. In its call to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and care for those who are forgotten, Grace has been a center for global and local mission work, such as medical mission teams to other countries, blood drives, needles and prayers, food trucks, collaboration with Action Ministries providing meals and after-school programs, weekly tutorial classes for neighborhood children, community events and daycare programs, and the help ministry of outreach to our unhoused citizens. During the pandemic, teams provided school lunches for kids in our neighborhood and over $4,000 was raised for the community food bank. And a small community garden provided a few fresh vegetables and lots of fun. The congregation is active in speaking out against discrimination and supporting equality and justice for all. Grace partners with Global Ministries as the resident congregation and has worked to shift its demographics toward diversity, globality, and neighborhood ministries. Even through the challenges of a pandemic, Grace serves and worships in innovative ways. We reached out to the community and held outdoor concerts to invite and bless our neighbors with bluegrass and jazz. And just over a year ago, our sanctuary hosted a TV broadcast of the Capital City Opera performing Handel's Messiah with masks on. The Congregation of Grace United Methodist Church continues to discern the next phase by building partners in mission and ministry that will continue this great legacy as a body of believers deeply engaged in mission through feeding the needs of others reaching out in partnerships to serve and make disciples, and welcoming all people into a community of God's love. As Willard Hurst said at our 100th anniversary celebration, as inspiring as our history is, our emphasis is constantly on the future. Grace, located near the center of this dynamic city, has the opportunity to provide a major part of the spiritual and moral leadership for Atlanta through its own programs and through the influence on the lives of its members and connection to the city's leadership. This is the unique excitement of being a member of Grace. Over 150 years, Grace has had thousands of baptisms, thousands of weddings, 
and tens of thousands of disciples converted or strengthened through its ministries. What an amazing grace indeed.